Hello everybody and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations with Chaos Counseling. Let us continue with uh, sadness. Uh. <coughs> Sorry. When I came to, I was just lying there on the training hall floor. By the time I got back to the garden, the place had totally changed. The torches were lit and the body was gone. And all of the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up too. Since the person did all that work alone, I just assumed it was a man. Hmm. So it was after the crime took place that the witness came to think the killer was a man. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I... No need to apologize. As Mr. Godot said, you're utterly exhausted. It's only natural that you would be a little confused. Also, if you consider the situation you described, it doesn't seem to be much of a stretch to assume the criminal was a man. That's sexist. Mr. Technically, White. the criminal was a woman, and they proved that it was Dahlia. In a weird way. Yeah. <laughs> In a way, yeah. Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. Things get weird when spirit mediums are involved. Yeah. In, yeah. In the Phoenix Wright universe, I should say. Oh, boy. Anytime it's like, I'm a medium, you're like, oh, God! Oh, fine. It's probably why they avoided using them in the mangas. They're like, nah, we're good. The torches were lit? Yes, that's how I noticed that the whole scene had changed. I'm going to say it was a killer who lit the torches. I mean, who else could it be? Killer probably lit them since it'd be impossible to do any cover-up work in the dark. Well, if that's true, there's one thing that still bothers me. Just one. <laughs> I'm just gone numb at this point with this case. Why did the killer go to the effort of moving the body? It's true. It's hard to see how that would be of any advantage to the killer. The only one who would gain anything from that would be... The only person that was at the inner temple, Maya. Very well, let me hear some more about the conditions of the crime scene. So you're saying the killer cleaned up the snow? It did look really odd. The snow was removed in an unnatural looking rectangular shape around the lantern. There were a lot of shovels around the inner temple. But they're all really heavy. Way too heavy for me to use. An odd fellow indeed, this killer. Why on earth would anyone want to take snow away? <laughs> he took it with him. Took it home! <laughs> well, there's one thing I can think of. Didn't you say that a lot of the victims' blood sprayed onto the snow? Y yeah. The area I collapsed and ended up being splattered. In other words, the killer's purpose was to hide the bloody snow. I think that's the most reasonable expect explanation. Hmm, <sighs> perhaps. However, there's something that's bothering me. The killer just wanted to hide the snow with blood on it. There was no need to remove that amount. That's true. You could have scooped up just the snow that was stained with blood. Looks like there are some mysteries behind this issue. But I think this will help explain them. Naturally, the killer must have done it, right? Yes, I think so. Why would the killer tamper with the crime scene like that? There must have been something that the killer desperately wanted to hide. I... The truth is, when I saw the crime scene, I felt something. You did? Yes. I felt like the killer was hiding the evidence for me. For my sake. What? Hiding it for you? Everyone knew that I was the only one at the inner temple that night. If Sister Bikini had come back and looked at the garden... 
She may have thought that you had done it. No, she definitely would have thought so. And you're saying that's why the killer cleaned up the crime scene to make it look like nothing had happened? Yes, I'm sure of it. Well, that's certainly an important piece of information. I want you to add that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. The body of Elise Donan was carried all the way to Hasakura Temple's courtyard. And then at the garden, the real scene of the crime, the snow that we suspect was covered in blood was scooped up and removed. It's reasonable to believe all this was done in an attempt to hide the true crime scene. However, there's still one matter that still seems somewhat odd. Oh. Uh, and what is that? What would that be? You must have figured it out by now, Mr. Godot. It's the message written in blood on the lantern. Hmm. It was written very clearly on the white stone lantern. Maya. Uh. If the killer was so motivated to protect Maya from suspicion, then why didn't he wipe the writing off the lantern? Oh, you're right! <laughs> Order! 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 Mr. Wright! Isn't it a fact that the killer was trying to cover up the crime scene? Indeed. But it doesn't make sense to move the body and remove the bloody snow, then not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all, the bloody writing. Hey! <laughs> That's like a weird, uh, like a weird pun? Bloody writing and also, like, bloody writing. Like, like... Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. I'll see yeah. myself out. But, <laughs> thank you. I got you. But if that is the case, do you have an explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior? Nope. <laughs> Not at all. None Why whatsoever. would this killer move the body and remove all that snow? But then, but then leave the bloody writing on the lantern. I don't know what the killer's plan was, but it's the fact that the killer left the writing on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. Why did the killer leave the message written in the blood on the lantern? The killer wrote it. Depend the crime on my or the killer didn't notice it. Holy crap! <laughs> Prosecutor Godot, earlier in this trial, you gave me some good advice. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Maybe you're... <clears throat> sorry. Maybe you're not as dumb as I thought. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that a crime occurred there. If that's the case, they wouldn't have left the bloody writing in the stone lantern on purpose. Therefore, it must mean that they didn't notice it. But that doesn't make any sense! The torches were all lit and everything! There's no way any normal person would miss something as glaring as that! You're right. There is no way any normal person would. What? What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in this incident who could have missed seeing the bloody writing altogether. And who would that be? Who's the person that could have failed to notice the bloody writing, I wonder? Well, I mean... <laughs> Mr. Godot, this is what you said yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. You can't see everything? Is that correct, Mr. Godot? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I would like the court to think back to the moment it was first presented. The... this lantern? There's something written on it. Why? It's written in blood! <laughs> Nonsense! This la this lantern, it is clean as a whistle! <coughs> Mr. Godot, 
just admit it. The king. <laughs> there are certain colors you can't see, correct? You can't see red on a white background, can you? That's right. We went through this once before. During the poisoning case at 3 a.m. This is the apron that the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. So cool that they do callbacks to old cases. And somehow spilled coffee on. There's something still bothering Mr. Godot. Why haven't you explained the blood stain to the court? Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You could see the coffee on the white apron, but you couldn't see the ketchup because it was red. <laughs> it's strange. In a black and white photo, those letters would have appeared black to me. I wonder, why am I the only one who can't see them? So then, Mr. Godot, are you admitting it? Or are you admitting that you couldn't see the red white writing on the lantern? Hmm. Hey, Gramps, didn't you know? But the reason why I don't drink red tea, that's a thing. Hey, sure. Uh, Not in red colored teas. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure about it until now, but I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Godot is the murderer. But. Yeah, it's literally no, red tea. There's no going back now. I finally figured out the truth. Mr. Godot, the defense at this time formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Elise Donan, also known as Miss Misty Fay. Yes, uh... It's hard to believe this may be true. However, once again, Mr. Wright has brought up a disquieting fact about you. <laughs> Just to make sure you don't fill out the indictment in red ink, Graham. <laughs> Come on. How does the little graffiti make me into the killer? Well, it does say I, I Prosecutor Godot, did it. <laughs> you told oh. me it was Maya. <laughs> Besides, it's not like it's my name that's written the air drat. Okay, that joke is less funny now. <laughs> <laughs> Godot wins. <laughs> Godot won. <laughs> I'm certain that the killer wasn't able to see this, see the color red. That, this is rich. Do go on, try it. The answer's right there at the crime scene. In the snow. The snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If they wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not take out just that area. Yes, why didn't they just take out that area? Oh, could it be? Yes, the killer couldn't see the red blood that had seeped onto the snow. And so he had to remove all the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood had landed, so he removed the whole area. Objection. Isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not a chance. The torches were all lit. They would have been able to see fine. It seems that once again this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Where are we, by the way? I feel like the roadmap is just going and <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah, yeah. Can you explain this, Mr. Godot? I know we should have taken that left at Albuquerque. Dang it. <laughs> oh, Maya? Wait! Wait just a minute! Maya. Shut up, shut up. What is it, witness? M Mr. Godot, is it the killer? After all, he didn't even come to the inner temple until two days after the murder took place. He didn't show up until after that old bridge got fixed up. Objection. How? 
Maya? <laughs> you can't testify to something like that. Why? What do you mean? I may not look it, but I'm... <laughs> After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. She didn't... I'm afraid I don't follow. Are you senile, old man? We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Ooh, ooh, that's right. Please, Your Honor, let me add to my testimony. No. Nick, please listen to me. No. Maya, do you plan to cover for Godot no matter what the cost? If that's the case, then I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Ha! <laughs> Nicely done. Try it. Very well, let's hear the witness's testimony. Please tell us what happened at the Inner Temple after the murder. Yes, sir. After I woke up, I began channeling and my spirit left me, as it were. But that little girl was there at the Inner Temple, too! That's an episode. We will see you guys next time! Bye. Bye.